Often the data that we need doesn't come as a single download or a single file. In these scenarios, we have to find a way of stacking our data on top of each other so that we can use it as if it were one single file. Well, the good news is that Power Query has a solution for us, and that is the append transformation. It lets us stack data together that has a similar column layout, and then we can use it as if it were one piece of data. And the great news is that because Power Query has a one-click refresh, it means that we can reload this data with a single click. So if you're ready, let's get started. In the scenario that we're working through, we're going to combine multiple sales reports into a single query. Here we have the data for January, and you can see that we have the date, the customer name, the product, who it's sold by, and the value. We have similar files for this for February, March, and April. And we want to combine all of these together into a single query. In reality, because our data has quite a consistent layout, we're more likely to use the feature that combines together all the files in a folder. However, to demonstrate this technique, then let's keep things simple and let's use this data. So I'll close this workbook. And then I've got a brand new workbook here in Excel. So from the data ribbon, I'm going to go to get data from file from Excel workbook. I'll select the January 2019 file and then click import. Here I'll select the January file and then click transform data. Okay, let's now clean up this data. The first thing I want to do is to remove the top three rows. So from the home ribbon, I go remove rows, remove top rows. Let's remove the top three rows, then I'll click okay. Next from the home ribbon, I'll select the use first row as headers. So that now promotes the first row, so we've got date, customer, products, sold by and value. Then I'll select all of those columns, go to transform and I'll apply the default data types. So date is a date, customer, product and sold by are all text and value has been changed to a whole number, which for this scenario is perfectly fine. Next with the date column selected, I'm going to go to add column, date, month, and then select the end of month. And then for presentational purposes, I'm just gonna move end of month to the start of our data set. Okay, that's all the transformations I want to make. So I'll go to home, close and load, close and load two. Now I only want to load my final consolidated query. Therefore, I'm going to load this as a connection only, and then click okay. There you go, in the queries and connections pane, we can see that we have the January query as connection only. Next, let's load our February data. So I'll double click on January to open up the Power Query Editor again. I'm going to right click on January and duplicate that query. I'm going to call it February. And then I'm going to make the changes inside the M code so that it refers to the February file rather than the January file. So we've got here in the source step, needs to say February. The navigation step needs to say February as well. Then I think the remaining steps are all fine. And as you can see, these are all dates that relate to February. So the January query relates to January dates and the February query relates to the February dates. Okay, it's now time to combine these into a single query. So from the home ribbon, I can go to append queries, click on the drop down, and go to append queries as new. There are two views here. We have the two table view, which is if we are trying to append two queries, or the three table view. I'm gonna go with the three table view, even though I only have two. So I'm gonna select January, add that, and then move it up so that January comes first and then February. Then after that, I'll click OK. This then creates one query that's given the default name of append one. I'm gonna call this combined sales data. Now, as we scroll down, you should see that here, 
row 50, we have the values from January, and then row 51, it then flips over to include the values from February. So we've now combined both of these together into a single query. So let's load these queries back into Excel, go to close, close and load two. Now in this session, we created two queries, one of which I want to load into my Excel workbook and one of which I don't. So I'm gonna to go to create connection only, so that both those queries are connection only. I'll then right click on my combined sales data, go to load to and I'll change that to a table. Perfect, we now have that data together inside a single view. Okay, let's use some formulas to get a single view of this. Unique, the month end date, close that. I'll change these two dates. And then we can just use a sum ifs. So sum ifs, the value for the month end is equal to that value there. I'll enter a hash to make that the spill range, close that bracket and press return. Now that gives us both values for January and February. Okay, let's do the same for our March data. So I'll double click on one of my queries to go back into the query editor. I'll right click on February. I'll duplicate that. Let's call it March. My source, I need to change the file path in there. And I also need to change the navigation step. Perfect, that's loaded my March query. I come back to my combined sales data. I can click on the icon next to the source step. And now I can add my March query into my tables to append. Now click OK and close and load. As you can see, our data has instantly updated to include the March data. Okay, everything's gone well so far, but what happens if we have a column that has a different header name? Let's come across and have a look. I'm going to duplicate my March query. Call it April. And now let's have a look at the April data. So I'll change both of those steps in the M code. Now the key thing to note here is that in column two, we have a value that's called sold to as the column name. However, if we come back to March, we can see that that column is called customer. So when we come back to April, as we click through those steps, you'll see that we will end up with an error because the name customer cannot be found. Our source data doesn't have a column of the name customer. So let's rename that to sold to. Let's fix both of those errors. So they're now called sold to, and we have a table that is working again. So let's add that into our appended query. I'll move across April, click OK. Oh, we seem to have an issue here because we have a customer column and we have a sold to column. And actually, as we scroll down, you can see that here on row 150, for March, it populates the customer column, but has null in the sold to column. Row 51 for April, we have null in the customer column and a value in the sold to column. Customer and sold to were both the third column within our two queries, yet they appear in two separate columns. And that's because Power Query appends based on column headings. So that means we need to go back into our April query and add a new step that rather than sold to, it is called customer. Then we come back to our combined sales data. You can see that that sold to column has now disappeared. Okay, the only new query is April. So we'll go to close, close and load two. We'll create a connection for the April query. Hopefully our data now updates perfectly to now include our April data. 
So as we saw there, the Power Query append transformation is really good at helping us to stack data on top of each other so that we can use it as if it were a single data source. Now, as I said at the start, this is really useful when we have data that comes from different data sources and a very different data layouts. So we might have a download from a nominal ledger report. We also might have some budget data in a spreadsheet. Well, using this append transformation, we can join those two tables together into a single source for us to use. But as we saw, the most important thing that we need to do is to make sure that we get our column headings to be exactly the same between both sources. Otherwise, we end up with null values and additional columns that we don't need. So if you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you next time.